Welcome back to Sunless Skies. Last episode, I searched more for Langley's lost lover. And this episode, I'm still following up on that, trying just a couple more leads before I think I give up. So, one... Well, this is actually even a lead. This is just a totally random thing. Uh, I'm back in the Reach. I'm at Trader's Wood. I've avoided going on expeditions into the woods deep ever since the really bad experience <laughs> where our uh, hearts were hurt quite a bit and something stole our voice. So, I mean, what are the chances of finding Langley's lost lover in the woods deep in Trader's Wood? Pretty low, but I don't know. Let's try it. Large expedition. Hmm. Yeah, so it looks like you have to have an expedition for something specific, otherworldly artifacts or bronzewood. Or just go back. I don't know, let's go for otherworldly artifacts, sure. I'm going to go through this sort of fast. Oh, and Transmian just joined me on my table. She wants to help me find some artifacts, don't you? Oh, that's gonna film her but she left these should all be really easy stat checks for me even higher and I have 100% chance at brave the storm went great listen to the voices 100% chance of success That's the flowers that are trying to talk to me I think hide from the beasts 100% chance of success enter the ruin and I guess we did it. Trophies won from the wood. Three otherworldly artifacts. Oh, can you only do one expedition? For every bit of time so you can't just like keep doing it again and again? No? No, you can keep doing it. Needed two, needed two. So essentially, given that those were 100% stat checks, they're guaranteed to succeed. So essentially, I just traded two fuel and two supplies for three artifacts. That's really good. But Langley's lost lover is not in the woods deep, to the surprise of no one. At the nature reserve now. All right, the final place I'm going to check for Langley's lover before I head off, off of the map. This person. Go visit the ornithologist. Let's actually read the text about them, just in case there's any hints. If he's not hiking through the wilderness or camping beneath the bough of, of one of the great trees, he sat alone in his watchtower watching for his bird. Ask about the bird. We've done this before. Mm, nothing interesting in there. Ask about the reserve. Uh, I don't think this is the person. Ask about his fellow researchers. Quick trip into the reserve. Damn. That's not them. The only other thing I can think of, which I just thought of really recently, is in Eleutheria, I've joined Winter's Reside, but there is the Brazen Brigade and the Heartcatcher Gardens. I haven't gone to those in forever because there's almost nothing to do there because I'm not joining them. And they won't take me, certainly, now that I've joined Winters Reside. But perhaps I could still talk with them and maybe there's somebody there who would fit the description without having to, like, join the, the group. It's very far-fetched, but it's possible. Either way, I think it's time to go off the map, so I'll meet you there. Almost to the edge of the world. Somebody in the comments told me that doing this does not finish the game. So I don't need to worry about it doing that. Still be opportunities to do things. Although someone did also say that it makes the game significantly harder because of the fire that follows. I guess it starts following me harder after this or something. Anyway, coming into this with the best condition I can think of to do it in. I have a smattering of stuff with me, including a, well, including a 
two panes of stained glass. Because I'm thinking, like, this might involve sunlight, maybe? Although in the darkness is where sunlight doesn't exist. That's actually why the earnest agitator went out there into the darkness. So now that I think of that, the two panes of stained glass might not matter. But anyway, a smattering of stuff and then as many supplies and fuel as I could take with me. No nightmares. My terror is as low as I can possibly get it. Oh, hello. Uh, yeah, let's take out the curator. Take a trophy, so then our terror is going to be zero percent. That really is as low as it can be. I guess I should take this egg for no other reason than Eleutheria. I can basically trade it for moments of inspiration, which I think I have zero moments of inspiration right now. Just hope it doesn't spawn another curator. Yeah, we're good. Right, so, as far as I know, I can go off the map anywhere in the Reach, but going off at the Grave of the Silent Saint feels particularly appropriate because it's very creepy. Oh man, everything looks weird when this green stops scrolling. Here we go. <sighs> the Graveyard of Stars. A waste stretches before you. The star that reigned over it died cold eons ago. Now its domain is empty of life, drowned in darkness, harried by a howling wind. Your crew beg you to turn back. All that waits ahead is the slow shedding of all that you were, then a frozen death. Venture in... Yeah, this is the only one actually related to the ambition. Propitiate the Waste Wife... Waste wife is angry with me. That's fine. Stay angry. Ambition, search the wastes for your friend. She left her crew at New Winchester and took the Azazel alone into the Howling Wastes. The more searches you make, the better your chances of finding her. Three fuel, two supplies. Your on your friend's trail gives you a 0% chance of success. So, we're guaranteed to fail the first time. Okay. For days you scour the waste. These are regions where the suns have died, victims of the polite slaughter concealed by the courtesy. You find nothing but frozen ruins, grim gray monuments, and rubble strewn across the sky. Winds hound your locomotive, battering her every hour of the endless night. Frost is a constant threat, creeping along pipes, infiltrating the stores. Eventually, you have to turn back. When your engine and crew have thawed, you can try again. Oh, second time it's already up to 40%. That's not bad. Hmm. I might have to go to Lustrum if this doesn't work. Otherwise, I won't have the fuel to try it again, really. Oof. Uh, same description. Yeah, I mean, technically I can do that, but my current fuel will run out in like 10 seconds. 80% chance of success. Let's turn back. Uh, I'm going to pop over to Lustrum. But <laughs> thanks. Thanks for spawning me there. Bam. Uh, pop over to Lustrum and I'll be right back. Let's take another crack at this. Another curator whoop, appeared. So it's after me right now, but I just don't feel like fighting it. Here, eat a couple mines. Uh, 
Search again. 80% chance of success. Yes. Just in time. On the third midnight after you entered the wastes, a junior signaler cries out, A fire, Captain! You rush to the window. There, in a ruined palace fragment, you see a flicker of lonely flame. This is going to be the first time, assuming they're alive and there and okay, that we've seen the earnest agitator since the beginning of the game. The Azazel. Or Azazel. Someone told me how to pronounce it, but I don't remember, so I'm just going to call it whatever I feel like. A small encampment is tucked into the tumbled pillars. Someone has tried to grow a plot of verdant seeds there, but the winds and cold have choked them. There's a lean-to constructed against the side of a locomotive, which has been stripped for parts to build makeshift components. Find the earnest agitator. She... She is? I think I'm supposed to say there is no sign of her at the camp. Perhaps she has taken shelter in the scavenged remains of her locomotive. You find her in the engine room, rolled in blankets beside the now cold firebox. She's half starved and bitten with frost. Another day and you'd have been too late. You're struck by the familiar curl of her hair on one cheek, the sharp arch of her eyebrows. Her forearms and hands are wrapped in bandages. Finally, they are actually alive. It's been so long. She opens her eyes. Recognition dawns in them. Then horror. She pushes you away. The fire follows. If you find me, it finds me. If it finds me, it finds you. Leave me, please. No, I could leave her, abandon my ambition. Hell no. Take her home. None of that. She's coming with you. Girl, we gotta kill a star? To make it stop following you? Sure. She fights you, but has no strength. You carry her back to your engine and put her in your cabin. She weighs next to nothing. You'll need to get her back to New Winchester and a doctor. As for the fire that follows and the wrath of the stars, well, what will happen will happen. Turn back. Are you gonna bump me into the egg again? Whoa! Pretty much. <laughs> so I don't know what to expect as far as like the fire that follows. What's it gonna do? Just more... More... Like the blue flame thing that has appeared every time we've learned something important? Is it just going to be that, but much more frequent? Are Lagoy going to suddenly just pop up around me? I don't know. Why did that... How come that curator wasn't interested in me? It's a little odd. Three divisions of the heavens for a moment of inspiration. Heck yeah. Got two moments of inspiration now. I got the other one by trading my, uh... Uh, like, what were they called? Well, basically the Windward Company nameplates to, uh, Jane at the Counting House. I was just thinking about how sort of ridiculous it seemed that the Ernest Agitator was worried about, like, the, the fire that follows finding us, like she's worried about us. As well as herself, of course, but she's worried about us and it feels kind of silly because I've been in the Blue Kingdom and, you know, I've just done so much and I've seen so much and my ship is so powerful and my weapons are so powerful. But remember, we haven't seen the Ernest Agitator for, I think, seven years? Since, since the beginning of the game, right? And I think the game started in 1905. It's 1912 now. So, yeah, it's been about seven years since they've seen us. The last time they saw us, we had a little dinky ship. And we hadn't seen any of the things that we've seen now. We didn't understand anything. Yeah, the Ernest Agitator really doesn't... doesn't have any idea what we've been through and what we've done. Seven years that we've been apart. Ambition, the reunion. 
you've established the earnest agitator in a safe house belonging to Meg. To try to confound the fire that follows, the house is lampless and candleless. Instead, the Baroness has provided an electric bulb, heater, and generator from the Empyrean to illuminate and heat your friend's room. In addition, the Didact has covered every surface with talismans and amulets. You don't know if they help. You don't think he does either. The Masked Citizen has provided flowers. A great many flowers. Attend to your friend. The doctor you contracted was not optimistic about her chances. She has been senseless for several days while you cared for her, but finally she's beginning to wake. Beneath the pile of blankets, she is still gaunt and wan. She lost two fingers to frostbite. Her eyes open. When she sees you, she gives a snort of exasperation. Fool, she murmurs fondly. Her voice is scoured by the cold. Then, in a sudden flash of panic, she looks at her forearms, only relaxing when she sees the long gloves you've covered them with. A few days ago, when you removed the old grimy bandages wrapped around her arms, you found the skin beneath covered in script. The fire that follows must have caught her at her lodgings. Her forearms and hands were covered in her secrets. Did you read them? Of course, you've known each other for years. She has no secrets from you. Yeah, remember, the Ernest Agitator is extremely close to Elizabeth and vice versa. We have a... Uh, what exactly was it called? Some sort of a... Crim was it a Crimson Promise, I think is what it was called when we leveled up? But basically, the Ernest Agitator is responsible for basically raising Elizabeth, at least after the age of, I think it was 16 or 17, after she left home. Yeah, the Ernest Agitator taught her about how the world actually works and what actually matters, and also how to stay alive on the streets and other unpleasant things. But they helped raise us into who we are now. We have their back absolutely and completely in anything. We've vowed to protect them and their secrets. So yeah, did you read them? Of course, you've known each other for years. She has no secrets from you. Oh, but she did. Many. The time she believed the wrong person. A betrayal she has never forgiven herself for. The reason she doesn't speak with her sister. The fact she has never confessed her true feelings to someone. The things she did in her pursuit of the truth about the stars. You reach for some water for her, avoiding her eyes. The earnest agitator is sitting up in the bed now, demolishing a bowl of soup. You both know you won't have long. The fire that follows is hunting for you. Does that mean I can't ask all these questions? Just one or something? Well, first thing, discuss what you've learned about the stars. Not even the seasoned captains know everything that the two of you have learned. You can speak of this with no one else. For a while, you talk about the War of the Stars and the terms of the courtesy that conceals it. Soon, though, she asks to stop. The more you discuss it, the more you think about it, the easier it will be for the fire to find you. When I began learning these secrets, I knew you'd want to know, too. Even when I learned of the fire, I assumed we'd be able to beat it, like we beat everything else. She frowns. I'm sorry. No, we're going to beat this too. Talk about... Well, we know why they fled to the wastes. Let's talk about old times. Forget sons and their strife, hunting fires and the courtesy. Talk instead of better days. For a time, you try to forget. You talk about old escapades and friends, bicker companionably about unsettled arguments, tease each other with familiar precision. It is good for a while, but soon her eyes settle on her gloves and she remembers the fire that follows and the hopelessness of her position. The earnest agitator is sitting up in the bed now. To, oh, that's the same, but this is new. Suddenly blue light flares in the window. You hear screams. The fire has found you. Help your friend escape to the roof. 
You knew it was only a matter of time. You've made preparations. You knew the fire would come, but not that it would come so soon or so stealthily. It inhabited the hearths of four houses around your location, then put forth embers and fingers of flame. It crept down into their cellars and then threw them to adjacent cellars, building in size and intensity. Then it rose. When you emerge onto the roof, an abrupt inferno has broken out. Blue flames spewing clouds of smoke consume the surrounding buildings. They have burned a sigil onto New Winchester itself. And now, moving with impossible speed, the fires close in. <laughs> the fire has followed. On the roof, with a ring of smoke drawing in, the earnest agitator leans on you heavily. I'm sorry. You know as much as I do now. It will never stop hunting us. If I could offer myself up to spare you, I would. You feel an abrupt itching at your neck. Your second mouth, a gift from the halved, speaks once more. This is possible, it says. Okay, wasn't expecting that. Ask what it means. The bargain. You cannot flee the courtesy or defy it. You can only join in. You could appeal for the right to slay a star. Oh, is this about the loophole? You point out that you are not, in fact, a son. Quite. However, the courtesy is unspecific on that point. Perhaps, since only sons are capable of defeating other sons, they did not think it was worth forbidding others from trying. Or perhaps the idea amused them. Regardless, the requirements are the gift of a soul and an exact supplication. You are not capable of the latter, but I am. And while customarily a rare and elaborate soul is given, to symbolize the weight of the act, hers will do. Then, of course, you will ultimately have to kill a son. Fuck yeah. I'll kill a son. But, if the earnest agitator's soul is being given as a gift for this, doesn't that mean they'll be dead? That is exactly what it means. We have to kill them. Uh, I assume the earnest agitator is totally willing. I don't, I don't think we're murdering them. So if we ignore the words of my extraneous mouth, um, if you stay in the skies, you'll be fleeing forever. You'll have to find a way to escape the heavens. I'm assuming that means the avid horizon? Do we go back to the Z? The problem is, I've learned all of this about stars. And this loophole and just all this shit, and I hate them. Just fleeing and just being like, well, they won. I'm just going to get out of here. Goodbye. I don't like that. I really, really don't like that. I want to do something. Hmm. Of course, the Blue Kingdom star is only one star among many. But... It's a start. Okay. I've come to a decision. The top option, sacrificing the earnest agitator to the courtesy so that we can kill a son. I like that a lot from just the effectiveness and the satisfaction and like the start of hopefully revolutionary things happening all over the skies. You know, hopefully by doing that, more people realize, hey, stars suck and you can kill them, even just a mortal like you. I like that a lot, but I'm also thinking about Elizabeth as a character and their relationship to the earnest agitator. We made a promise to the earnest agitator to always keep their secrets, always have their back. They're Elizabeth's highest priority, as important as setting things right, or writer is. 
by killing a son and showing everybody that it's possible and revolution and justice, as important as all of that is, her first priority is her best friend in the world. So, they flee together. Ignore the words of your extraneous mouth. You prepared an escape, but it will only be the first. If you stay in the skies, you'll be fleeing forever. You'll have to find a way to escape the heavens. Friends in high places. The second mouth closes, tight as a vice. It never speaks again. Over the crackling of fire and the shouts, you hear another, more welcome noise. The shrill scream of a locomotive's whistle. The smoke billows and out of it thunders. The Bodicon? The plucky Baroness's engine. A rope ladder is flung down and you help the earnest agitator to climb up and inside as the locomotive pulls away. The fires leap one last time and then their blueness fades from them. The fire that follows is patient. You think it is enjoying this. I'll drop you at the station, the Baroness tells you, and then you better start running. She hugs each of you once. Your old friend is now an officer on your locomotive. Talk to her to decide what's next. They'll serve as your first officer. I'm curious if they're going to have a portrait. Finally, for the earnest agitator, they haven't so far. I have no idea what they look like. Oh, they don't. Just like the ambition kind of thing. Two hearts, two iron, two mirrors, two veils. Mm, so I don't need to actually assign them as my first officer. I can just talk with them. Uh, I do want the ten mirrors. Otherwise, I'll have to get rid of some of my stuff. So I'm not going to equip the old friend. <laughs> Let's not equip them. Let's just talk with him. You've known the earnest agitator since the days before London came to the heavens. They were simpler times. Now you're both fleeing the wrath of the suns and their bloodhound, the fire that follows. The knowledge you've learned is the scent that leads it to you. There is nowhere to hide in all the wide, wild skies. Lay your plans. Moment of inspiration, three sky stories. Night after night, you meet in your cabin and try to come up with a way out of your predicament. You soon rediscover what good foils you made for each other. Thinking is easier with two minds doing it. After scouring your shared knowledge of the skies, and considering and discarding countless fruitless ideas, you're left with a single conundrum and no good recourse. There's no refuge for you in the sky. Therefore, you have two choices. Flee the heavens, or flee yourselves. Decide whether, whether to flee the heavens or change yourselves beyond recognition. Would that mean, like, Paranesi? Would that be the changing myself beyond recognition? Discuss fleeing the heavens. London entered the sky through the avid horizon, but that door has been closed for years. On the far side lies the Neath, a vast subterranean cavern where suns hold no sway. No one knows why the Avid Horizon closed. One day, people just stopped coming through it. Attempts to reopen it have been unsuccessful. Of course, you would only need to open it a crack, just wide enough and long enough, for the two of you to slip through. The Eagle Khan provided insight and machinery that helped Her Majesty open and hold open the door, your friend says. If we are to do so again, we'll need some of that ingenuity. It won't come cheap. Then we'll need to establish a base at the gate itself. Visit the Empyrean and Eleutheria to acquire the devices and knowledge you need to pursue this course of action. Okay. Well, I got the money part covered. Discuss hiding yourselves. The fire that follows is hunting you and the things you've learned. But what if you were to become someone else entirely? In Eleutheria, there is a prison called Paranesi. Those who are cast into its deepest cells emerge changed beyond recognition. 
It would mean giving ourselves up, your friend warns. We would become new people, with new memories, new faces, new selves. Hell no. We're not doing that. So, I can just back out at this point, right? Yeah. Okay. I wonder how persistent the fire that follows is going to be on my way to Eleutheria. I don't know, but I'm going to head there and I'll bring you back when I get there or something happens. Came back to Eleutheria with no incidents. Before going back to Pan, I decided to go to Langley Hall because I was just curious, like, what if one of the people just mingling around in the crowds in Langley Hall, what if one of them is Langley's lover? Seems really unlikely, but I also wondered if I could go to Langley now and say something new. And it turns out, I can. With the Langley themselves, I can offer myself. You searched the heavens and found no one, but you follow the trail Langley left behind. The shoes even fit. Lord Langley looks at you with frank astonishment. Uh, but you... Uh, that is to say, are... Well, not wishing to be impolite, but... He trails off and stares at his feet. Is he blushing? You stand by the piano in reach, but not so close as to risk discomfort. At last, Lord Langley raises his head, a dark fall of hair covering his eyes. I did not think to find you again. He stands from the piano and takes your hand. Matters progress. Later, he tells you three things. The location of a treasure inside Langley Hall. That he understands you're a captain with obligations, but he will always be here, waiting for you to visit. And that he loves you totally, unquestioningly, entirely. I wasn't expecting this as a conclusion of the story. I'm happy that Langley found the person? Question mark? Am I actually the person or is it just, you know, did I just basically become the person in searching? I don't know. But it's a happy ending, isn't it? Actually, no. No, it's not a happy ending. I'm about to leave the skies forever to the avid horizon. Oh, let's forget this ever happened. Lord Langley has taken you for his long lost love. I wonder if uh, back when I got the super Lipsarian person, I forgot their name. When they asked me, are you sure this is the one? What if I said yes? I don't think they know. I don't think anybody knows. If I pressed it, perhaps they would have accepted them just as they accepted me. Visit Lord Langley. Your love is waiting for you. Unlock this with a moment of inspiration. Mm, I don't think I want to do that. I only have one left. Okay, yeah, I'm just going to leave. That was a uh, uh, happy ending. Yep. Mm -hmm. Just don't think about it too hard, okay? You know what? Just because there's nothing in the game as far as I can see, and there probably won't be anything in the game later on that says like, hey, uh, Lord Langley, since you're the person that, or I'm the person you've been looking for, how about you come with us through the Avid Horizon? Join us. There's nothing in the game that says that, but you know what? I'm just going to say it myself. Whether the, game, whether the game says it or not, that does have a happy ending. Lord Langley is coming with us. Through the Avatar Horizon. Just pulling into the Eagle's Empyrean. 
Okay, ambition. Acquire Empyrean Ingenuity. To open the Avid Horizon and flee the sky, the earnest agitator needs access to Empyrean materials and records concerning the last time the gate was opened. Either the bespectacled official or the London Embassy should be able to provide what you need, but do either of them trust you enough to share it? No. None of them do. <laughs> Uh, ask how to win over one side or the other. I mean, I kind of already know this. Yeah. Shit. Okay. This has to wait. Well, while I'm here... Dasser engine plaques, does that increase how much they like me? Hmm... I don't think any of these increase how much they like me other than the port report from Caduceus, I assume. Yes, Caduceus. Back at the Eagle's Empyrean with a port report from Caduceus. Let's deliver intelligence. Eagle currently considers you an informant. Hopefully that's enough trust for the ambition. No. Okay. Just, okay, so I guess we need to deliver another port report. Just please don't have it be from Caduceus. I'm so tired of that. What would you like? What are you interested in? House of Rods and Chains. Okay, something different. Back to the Ingles Empyrean once again. Let's deliver intelligence on the house. Equal currently considers you a convenient informant. Okay, that's probably still not enough. Oh, it is. Nice. Call on a favor from the bespectacled official. You have proven your value to the equal con. Perhaps some strings could be pulled. It takes some convincing, but eventually several crates are delivered to your locomotive, containing redacted documents, incomprehensible machinery, and even more incomprehensible blueprints. The... Uh, let's say Yoki, the Yoki Collection. An accompanying letter from the official informs you, This is all I can risk, but it includes accounts, appropriately edited, of the earliest attempts to open the gate. The letter makes it very clear that you are no longer warmly regarded by the Empyrean. The earnest agitator is satisfied. This will have to do. It's enough to get started on, anyway. We'll have to establish a base of operations at the gate itself. If you wish to flee the sky, you can now establish a base there on the quiet sea. Back at New Winchester in the Reach, and I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. So I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, I'm gonna head over here to get to Albion, and then try to establish a base of operations at the Quiet Sea.